Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today we're making a 3D Lightning McQueen Cars Cake. You can use this method that I'm going to show you to make any car cake that you like, but today I'm going to show you how to decorate it up as Lightning McQueen because that's the one that has been requested the most. To make it easier for you to follow what I'm doing, I've drawn up a cutting template and you'll need to cut out the template and cut the cake board and some of the fondant templates. Just follow the instructions on each piece and if they're too large to fit on the page then they have a joining line to guide you where to stick them together. That's available on the website howtocookthat.net as well as all of the ingredients for the recipes that we're using. All of that is on the website and I'll put a link in the description below this video. Let's start with the number 95. Place some non-stick baking paper over your 95 and cut around the coloured part of the numbers, ignoring the white outline. You want to cut close to the colour. Then roll out some white fondant. And if your fondant's sticky, you might need to gently rub some oil on the rolling pin when you roll it out to stop the fondant from just gluing to it. Place your non-stick baking paper with the 95 cut out onto your fondant and then using a dry paintbrush with either some edible yellow powdered colour or some yellow luster dust, just dust that over the top half of your numbers. Then use the red on the bottom half and blend it in the middle, gently smudging the red into the yellow. If you've got orange, then use orange in the middle. If not, just blend them together. Use a tissue to remove any excess colour so that it doesn't spill onto the numbers when we're peeling it off. Then gently lift off the paper and using a knife cut around the numbers leaving a white border around them so that it looks just like it did in the picture. When you're making a 3D cake like this it helps if you can make a lot of the details ahead of time so that you're not trying to get it all done the night before the party. Use a straw to cut out the centre of the number 9 because that would be too tricky to do with a knife. And you need to make three of these number 95s, one for each side of your car and one for the top. And once they're made, don't move them off your baking paper because if you do try and move them while they're still wet like this, they're going to move out of shape. Instead, just use some scissors to cut around the baking paper and then move them onto a tray so that you can leave them to dry. Next, for the Rusty's symbol that's on the front bonnet, take a sheet of non-stick baking paper and carefully cut out the word Rusty's and the curved lines around the top and the bottom. Don't worry about the tiny writing on the logo, we're just going to do the big word and make sure you keep the centres, those tiny little bits of the letter E. If you lose it, just cut another little one. You're going to need those. Roll out some brown fondant and place the baking paper over the top and then carefully place those little pieces of E in the right spot. Then using your dry paintbrush again, brush on some yellow and then some orange and then right on the very corners just a small tinge of your red colour. You don't want too much of that because it doesn't contrast enough with the brown so you won't be able to read it if you do too much red. Remove the centre of the E and cut around the logo and next we want to make an outline for this logo. To do that roll a long skinny snake of black fondant. Now this needs to be even the snake otherwise your outline will be uneven. If, if you don't get it right first time just roll it back up into a ball and try it again. It can take some practice to get a long, even snake. If you can't roll snakes and you've tried and you just can't get it, then you can try cutting a thin shaving using a pizza cutter. Brush a little water around the edge of your logo and then pick a starting point and wrap the outline around using the end of your paintbrush to push it into the small corners. Once you've done that with the Rusty's symbol, we also need to outline the numbers 95. So you need more of that black. So again, either roll it out or use the pizza cutter. And same thing, moisten it with a paintbrush, wrap it around using the end of the paintbrush or a knife just to get it right into all of the corners where you need it. Then place some extra black outline on the bottom sides of your numbers, like it's like a thicker shadow on the bottom edges. To make your eyes, cut out circles in the size shown on the template. I used a piping tip for this. You only need two eyes, but I like making extra so then I can choose the two that look best together and look the most natural. Using a straw, cut a circle of black fondant out and place that onto the eye. If you put a tiny dab of water onto the white, it will help it stick, but if you use too much, you'll have a puddle of black around the pupil. So you want to make it just damp rather than wet. Use some blue colouring and paint around the edge of the eye and then on the white fondant, making sure you leave one quarter of the eye a bit lighter than the rest of it. You can make these fondant details that we're doing ahead up to a month before and just leave them to dry out in the open air at room temperature and then once they're dry you can put them in an airtight container but make sure you've got non-stick paper in between them. Then you add the tiniest little 
dot, the tiny little ball of white fondant, just to the edge of the pupil there, just to bring the eye to life. Now to make our headlights and brake lights. To do that, place your templates onto the fondant and cut around them with a knife. Paint them with black food colouring around the edges and on top to match the pictures that you've got. Then paint in the yellow and the red and then add the black details on top of the brake light. So this is just like painting a picture or just like colouring in really. You've got the shape cut out and you just need to follow what you can see in front of you, copy it and colour it in. I'm using gel colours for this. You can get those from cake decorating stores. To make the very back of the car, cut around the template in red fondant twice, trim the second one shorter than the first and add it to the base using some water to glue them together, again just making it damp not wet. Then carefully put your brake lights into position and then roll out another snake of black fondant and this time cut it into equal lengths and brush those with your silver luster dust. You, if you can't get hold of luster dust, then you could just use grey fondant for these rods instead of making them silver. Using a tiny bit of water, place one in the centre, and then one on either side, and then one halfway in between each of those so that you get it even. Then I'm using the end of a piping tip, or you can use something small like the tip of a pen with the ink taken out of it, and just push down on one end of each one so that it looks like it's bolted into place. I'm always on the lookout for other sweet channels on YouTube, and if you are having a cars party, then you might want to check out my Cupcake Addictions tutorial. She's putting up a Mater cupcake this week. I'll put a link to her channel in the description below this video for you. Now for your windows, roll out some dark grey fondant and cut around the template to make the shape of the back and the side windows and set those aside on a tray to dry with all your other details. Now all of that can be done ahead weeks before the party so that then when you come to doing the actual party, it's not a stress. You guys keep asking how long does it take to make these cakes? Well to do all of those details and some of them I made more than one of so that I could choose the best of, that took six hours. So set aside plenty of time. Now a couple of days before I want you to make the cakes and the frosting. I'm using my favourite chocolate cake recipe which is moist and delicious and all of those recipe details are on the website along with all the details about the fondant and frosting quantities that you'll need for this cake. I'm tripling the cake recipe, which will give me six trays of cake, of which you only need five to make this cake. So you'll end up with one spare tray cake, which you can use just to eat. For the frosting, I'm making my chocolate buttercream and some ganache, and I've left the ganache overnight to firm up, and then I'm just beating those together. So it gives a rich chocolatey frosting, but it's not quite as expensive as if you just use ganache. Using the buttercream makes it a little more affordable. Cut out your cake board template out of thick cardboard, and it will also need to be waterproof so it doesn't just absorb the moisture and the oil from the cake, and then it's going to be too soft. So you can either do that using foil or using tape and completely cover it so it's waterproofed. Then bend your base up to match the profile of the base of the side of the car. If you want a simpler option you can skip doing the cake board altogether, that's fine. You just make the base of your cake sit flat on the serving platter and for that option you're going to need that sixth layer of cake so don't eat it then. And there obviously then won't be a gap under your car. If you want your car off the platter, then you're going to need to support it up. I'm using one centimetre maths counting blocks. If you are using a wooden cake board, you can just drill support rods in and trim them to the right size like we did on the minion cake. But today I'm using a tile, so I'm not going to attempt to drill through it without cracking it. So I'm going to hot glue gun them into place instead. Once you've finished, your cake board should look like this, with the cardboard sitting off the tray and it's not completely flat. It's going a bit up at the back and a bit up at the front. Once all of your cakes are completely cool, I want you to spray them with some simple syrup to ensure that the cake is extra moist. When you're making 3D cakes, the cake is exposed to the air for quite a while while you're putting it all together and while you're carving it, so this can make it dry out a bit. So to help counteract that, we just add some of this simple syrup, which surprisingly doesn't make the cake soggy, it just makes the cake moist. Put your car template onto one of the tray cakes and cut around it using a serrated knife. And then place a small amount of frosting onto the cake board to hold the cake in place. Then here's my trick to get the cake to the cake board without it breaking. Slide it onto something flat and strong. I'm using a chopping board. 
bring it to one end of, and then fold the baking paper under the edge and then place the start of the cake in the correct position and pull back the baking paper under the board backwards towards the opposite edge. And as you do that, the cake slides off into place. Smother that in a thin layer of yummy frosting and then add your next layer using the same method. If it's not quite in the right spot, just straighten it up as you go. You need to repeat that until you have four layers of cake piled up and then cut your fifth layer into two pieces and add it to the middle section because that's where we need more height. Now take your side template and use that as a guide to carve over the top of your cake, cutting over the bonnet, up over the top and down the other side. Next, take the large roof template and line up the front of it with the front of the windscreen, which you can see where that is from where you've cut from your side template. Cut around this template going straight down to the level of the front bonnet and no further. Then remove the excess cake. And add the smaller roof template. This time line that up with the top of the windscreen, not the front of the windscreen. And trim down on an angle to join up with the base of the previous cut that you've just done using the bigger template. Next we want to slightly trim down the front bonnet just like it looks on the car's cake in the same width as the top of the roof and you want to do the same thing again at the back of the car so it goes down slightly in the middle. Using your knife then slightly round off the corners at the top and the base of the cake. Then take a round cookie cutter in a similar size to the wheels if it's slightly smaller that's okay you can do more than one cut with it and then using your template find the correct location for the wheels and push the cutter into the cake and then use a spoon to scoop out the cake that's in the middle there. Next you want to cover the entire cake in frosting. This seals in the moisture of the cake and it gives us something for the fondant to stick to. Once it's completely covered, place it in the fridge. While it's in the fridge, we're going to make our wheels. To do that, cut Oreo-sized circles out of some red fondant and then using a small circle, indent the centre. Then using a straw, cut six circles in the centre in the middle section. Then take another straw, flatten it out one way, then turn it and flatten it in the opposite way and use that to cut around the edge of the wheel to cut rectangles out of that. Next, cut eight circles of black fondant. Sandwich two Oreos together using your frosting and spread a thin layer of frosting around the edges. Add a circle of black fondant to the top and the bottom of each stack and then brush a small amount of water, just dampen it onto the black and then add the red circles on top. Roll out some black fondant fairly thickly and evenly. To help you do this, you can buy rings for your rolling pin or you can use two of something that's the same size like chopsticks like I'm using here. Cut it to size using the template, then cut a narrower strip of red fondant that's been fairly thinly rolled and put that up fairly close to the top edge of your wheel. Then use a chopstick to make an indent for the top of the red circle to go into so that when you're rolling it you're not squashing that red disc that you've just made which will make it crack. So we're just indenting down using the chopstick or you can use a ruler, whatever you've got that's going to make enough space that when you're rolling that red bit can just slot into. Place one of your wheels on top and roll it up. When you get to the end, trim off the excess using scissors and push the end neatly into place. Give it a gentle roll to smooth out your wheel and then repeat that of course to give you another three wheels. Take your cake out of the fridge and using some quality paper towel, gently rub to smooth out any little bumps in the frosting. Take a bit of time here to do this carefully because when you cover your cake in fondant, any bumps that you have in your frosting underneath, you're going to be able to see. Next, thinly roll out some white fondant and place it where the mouth should go. It needs to be bigger than the mouth will actually be, but it needs to be fairly thin so that you don't see the line on the edge of it when you put the other fondant over the top. Rub a little cooking oil onto it so that the mouth template will stick over the top and add a really thin piece of black across each corner of the mouth just under the template. Next I'm placing a toothpick right in the middle so I can use it to find where to cut it later. We will pull it out so it's not in the finished cake so nobody's going to eat a toothpick so don't worry about that. It's just to guide us to where. Now you don't want it sticking out too much, you just want it sticking out just enough so that you can press on your fondant and find it later. Now to roll out your red fondant. Lightly grease your rolling pin and roll out that fondant. 
Before I start rolling, I put the baking paper over the top of my cake to measure how big my fondant needs to be and how wide it needs to be as well so that I know when I get on my baking paper I need to roll it all the way out to that size and I know confidently that that will cover the cake. Pick up your fondant, I just do that using my forearms and then drape it over the car, gently smoothing it into the contours and tuck it into the wheel holes. Use some scissors to trim off any excess fondant. When you're trimming, always leave more than you think you need so that you can tuck it under neatly. Somehow when you're cutting fondant to the bottom of a cake, when you cut it, it always seems to shrink magically once it's cut and it's too short, then you don't want that. So cut it longer than you think. Use a ball of red fondant to smooth out over the cake without leaving any fingerprints on it. This also helps smooth out any little imperfections or bumps you might have given it while you're putting it on. Now for the mouth. Feel for that toothpick and once you've located it, take a knife and gently cut across in a smile shape on the front. Then gently push the fondant up and down to make a smile shape and remove that baking paper. So you don't actually need to take any red fondant away, we're just going to squash it up and squash it down. And the purpose of the baking paper was to keep the teeth really white. Pull out the toothpick and then use a knife to cut the smile shape in the teeth. Now at this point it seems to come together fairly quickly because you've already done a lot of these details ahead. So cut the bonnet lines so that you can see where the bonnet goes. Stick on your little headlights that you made before just using again a tiny bit of water to make it stick. Then add your Rusty's symbol to the bonnet. Add on your side windows to both sides of the car and then place the number 95 on top. Find where you want it to go before you add any water to it and then brush a tiny bit of water on the back and stick it into place. Next we need to make the rivets for the front bonnet. We just cut small circles out of black fondant using a straw and then dust them with silver luster dust. Add your four rivets to the front bonnet. Don't use too much water again when adding your details or the fondant colour will run. You just want to make a tiny little bit of water and then put them into place. At the back of the car, add a strip of fondant and support it using a ruler propped up on something that matches the height that you need. Then moisten the back of your car and add the back detail piece into place and secure that using some spaghetti. Now we're just going to leave them long and sticking out of the car for now and we'll trim them short once the back of the car has fused into place. And the reason we use uncooked spaghetti rather than toothpicks is because they're edible and they're not going to hurt anyone's mouth. And make sure when you've put that back of the car on that there's a close join between the back piece and the cake so that you can then leave them to fuse together. Use the template to cut out the windscreen and place that on your cake and then cut out the red top of the windscreen. I did this by hand but I'll add a template for that as well and then place that over the top of the windscreen lining it up with just above the white so that you can't see the white at the top. Next, add your eyes, making sure that the white dot is facing the same way on both of them. You can place them in the middle like this, or you can put them to one side like it is on the car's poster. It's up to you. Next, we need to make the side lightning flash for our cars. So roll out some yellow fondant and use the powdered colour or luster dust again to shade it from orange to red. Roll out some black fondant really thinly and place the yellow flash that you've just done over the top and then trim around the edge leaving a black border the whole way around. The reason that we don't make this part ahead is we need it to be still malleable and so that we can put it around the shape of our car. Place the thin end of the lightning flash near the base of the front wheel and then overlapping just a tiny bit and then just smooth it towards the back of the car and around that back bit. Trim the start of the lightning flash using scissors and then use your cookie cutter to gently cut around the wheel area. Now you don't want to push too hard because we don't want to cut through the red fondant here, just the lightning flash. Add your numbers to each side of the car, brushing on a tiny bit of water on the back of each letter to make them stick. And by now you should be able to trim off the spaghetti and remove your support from the back. Add your wheels and for them to fit you need the hole to be high enough right to the back. If they don't fit just use your finger or the round cutter to push it up a bit higher and then slot the wheel into place. 
For the front wheels, you can put them in straight or you can put them on an angle just like on the poster. Add the other two wheels and your cake is completed and ready to party. Thanks for watching and if you make this cake or a different car cake using this tutorial, make sure you take a photo, head on through to the blog and load it up in the comments section there. I love to see what you've done. And if you haven't already, subscribe and join us next week for a dessert recipe, following week for chocolate and then back to cake. And you can put all your requests in the comments below. See you all next week. Bye.